We should have had him as a catcher, but we didn't get him. Uh, for those of you out there who have the energy to walk down to a mailbox and uh, remember to affix a stamp, our address for real letter writers is 350 North. At Get my next story to stand over my shoulder and spell for me. I'll help you. I, I've helped you in the past, yes. Billy. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> last week I had one of those inspirations. I said, I better write a column about Purdue because people are catching on around the country that, that this is a marvelously <clears throat> entertaining football team. So I called down there, Bill, and I got the PR person. I haven't called there in a number of years, I, and I had a young, uh, I am assuming a young woman, and I said, I need a guy from the south side or from the south suburbs. So she's going through and she's giving me all these places like Elmhurst and uh, way up in northern Illinois and out. No, no, no. You should have simplified and said, give me a D lineman. A defensive lineman. <laughs> no, no, what I wanted was an offensive lineman. All right. And uh, she said, Mokina. Oh, Mokina. <laughs> so I got Dan Maley, who's a fifth-year senior. And both his name and his town end in a vowel. So he's a real football yes, player. Like 22 years old, 6'6", 280-pound right tackle, oh. played at Providence. So uh, what I wanted to know was from a lineman, you know, you go to spring practice and here comes Joe Tiller. And Joe says, we're going to throw the ball all over the place. And I said, Dan, how did you adjust to that? And he said, well, at first... I wondered if it would work. <laughs> and then, then, then they played Notre Dame, and he knew it would he work. He said, then I wondered if it could work in the Big Ten, if you could pass. Well, it has worked. And this is, this is the delightful team of the nation. This is what Northwestern was a couple of years ago after a loss to Toledo, which, as Lester pointed out a couple of weeks ago, has turned out to be one of the very good teams in the country. Although he doesn't know their nickname, but go ahead. It's the <laughs> Rockets. I know <laughs> some things. And it's the, oh, I have a question for you uh, guys. Uh, in that conference, why does Bowling Green wear red uniform? <laughs> I just, I saw them on, they were on TV. Uh, that's Bowling Green. In, no, in, what are they called? Uh, Cardinals or yeah. something? Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Bowling Green? I don't know. I don't remember. The, um, Wait, are, are we talking about Purdue now because they have to face Iowa, Michigan State, and Penn State coming up, and the bubble may be bursting? No, Is we're that why we're talking about, about them? With six wins, they're almost a shoe-in for a bowl game. Even and if they lose their next yes, three? Yeah. If, because yes. they travel well. Yeah. <laughs> and there are more television sets in the seven Big Ten states than a lot of other now, states. If you look at the names of the teams that Purdue has beaten, uh, Notre Dame, Ball State, Northwestern, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois, I don't see any of those ranked anywhere other than in the second division of their conference. Yeah, well, they opened against Toledo, and Toledo well, was undefeated in rank. And they lost. Remember, <laughs> Wisconsin had won six in a row before the, uh, Wisconsin played Purdue, and Purdue just destroyed Wisconsin. Right. And uh, the coach and the, and, the, and the Wisconsin players said, you know, they couldn't figure this thing out. Is there a scenario here where Purdue could get lucky and end up in the Rose Bowl? Right. They hey, do not, why not play Ohio State. Not? They do not play Michigan. <clears throat> that's, 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 the, a good, that's a good way to get to the, the Way, uh, did Northwestern get in that way exactly. without playing Ohio State and uh, uh, who else uh, was it? Michigan State. Penn Michigan State. Penn State no, Mich it played Penn State. They played Penn State. This is a, not the first <clears throat> time that a coach has come in from the West uh, into the Big Ten, a predominantly running league, and has turned it upside down. Daryl Rogers did it at Michigan State in the 70s, and remember that's the heyday of Woody Hayes and Bo Schembechler. And, uh, but it's the Big Ten no longer is a running league. Well, uh, it's... The, the, the teams in November, have, it's the, a running the, league. The teams that have been successful in, in recent years going to the Rose Bowl have also had... They've had passing good, as well. Good passing. Well, when Wisconsin won... And Purdue, uh, can, when Purdue North can run the ball as well. You know, also. Since, they Michigan, have, since Michigan last went to the Rose Bowl, Purdue, I mean... Um, uh, Northwestern. Northwestern has gone. Wisconsin has gone. So maybe this is a uh, Purdue's turn. I, I have, don't think that. I have make a it. question for our Ivy League graduate, <laughs> because he is the only person at this table, other than Gleason, who would know the answer to this. In the early days of flight, back to Orville Wright and all those boys. How did they steer? What did they call the thing that they steered the plane with? The stick. 
joystick. The, the joystick? The tiller. The tiller. They the tiller. As in the boat. Yeah. And and this, Joe Tiller. They, they steered with a tiller. There Does was it? no wheel or anything like that. See, I, I missed that, despite my Ivy League. Um, hasn't Purdue always passed the ball? Yeah. Bob Greasy, Mark Herman, I mean, there's a few quarterbacks. Cecil Isbell. <laughs> now we're going back. Yeah. Len Dawson. Len Dawson. Len Dawson. Bob, Dawson. Bob Greasy. <laughs> right. But it's, the, it's the quarterback. It's quarterback. Dale you. Samuels. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's another one. That's another right. one. Jim, they, Jim Everett, right through yeah, the years. Is. It's quarterback you, yep. but last spring, Billy Dickin was not the starting quarterback. Now, just think of a team with a quarterback named Billy Dickin. And, and being north in the Mesa Dixon line. And he's, uh, he's from <laughs> Illinois somewhere. Wow. He's from downstate Illinois. Billy Dickin, and Billy Dickin can throw that thing. He, he hits eight different receivers. They, they are often... There's nobody in the backfield Wait. except the quarterback. They, you can't have a. Yes, you can. No, you can't have a. Now, when they played this past week, no, I mean the Illini, not. <laughs> not there. Not, not the at game. one I mean, time. No, they're, they're, <laughs> he he throws to eight different guys. Yes. He found a loophole in the rule. You can have eight guys. They did run the ball against the Illini this past week, but that was only after they were ahead, 34 to nothing. There was a guy that ran 11 yards a crack. Watson, I believe it was Matthew Kendall Matthews. He picked up 177 yards, but it was all when the game was. What's going, to, what's going to be interesting is coming week. They're playing at Iowa, and South Iowa, yes. Iowa has Very two. year. Those two teams will not play each other, so their destiny is going to be settled by playing other teams. Good game this week. We should fix tackles. That'll get you some stadium. You can be there. For a battle of champions. <laughs> you can be there. In a glittering city. You Red, right. can be we there. Zing. It's on two. Ready? At the Western Athletic Conference Football Championship. <laughs> Air Force on the road at San Jose, looking to jumpstart the offense. Blaine Morgan back in the starting lineup, and Morgan had an instant impact. A 34-yard touchdown pass to Quilario Brown in the first quarter. 7-0 Falcons. Then it is Quilario Brown one more time. This time with the pitch for Morgan. He goes down the far sideline. It's a 35-yard score. 14-0 Falcons, but in the second period, San Jose State rallies. Quarterback Dan O'Dell goes to Oliver Newell. 21-yard touchdown. It was 14-7. Later in the second, Odell strikes one more time. This time to Gabe Payne. Six-yard touchdown, and the Spartans had a 16-14 lead. In the fourth quarter, Air Force would retake the lead. Nifty reverse. Just before he's taken down, Morgan pitches it to Matt Farmer. Six-yard touchdown, 22-19 Falcons. But San Jose State had the last shot. And Dan Odell goes nine yards to Green. The touchdown makes it a 25-20 win for San Jose State. The Spartans celebrate. Carlos Meeks got it done on the ground, but the Spartan defense handled the Falcons. All right, Tom, from there we go to Fresno, California. Fresno State hosting the running Rebels of UNLV. Second quarter, Fresno State, they fake the field goal. Ben Falk hooks up with Scott Thompson, a couple of tight ends, 15 to 7. The Bulldogs go on top. Now in the third quarter, Look at this, Kevin Cook with time underneath, he throws complete. Only problem is he completed it to Efrain Guzar, who wears a different colored jersey. 22-yard pick return, 32-7 at that point, Fresno State. Bill Volek looks deep and finds Terrence Jones. Nice catch, good pass in the end zone. 39-14 at that point, and Fresno State goes on to win 46-28 over UNLV. They return two picks in that game for touchdowns. Wyoming coming off the loss to Colorado State, taking on SMU. One the week before against Utah, and Wyoming had the lead 3-0. Marcus Brigham pans it, the 8-yard touchdown, 10-zip. SMU responds, Kelsey Adams, 31-yard touchdown run, cuts the lead to 10-7 at the half. Third quarter, well, it was Roy Rios' quarter. The Mustang kicker had three field goals. This one, a 52-yarder, and SMU led it 16-10. 
They would put it away when quarterback Chris Sanders hooks up with Tony Newsom. The 22-yard touchdown pass, SMU. Hands Wyoming their second straight defeat, 22-17 the final score. Kelsey Adams led the way for SMU. He had 124 yards and that touchdown. Wyoming now has lost two in a row. SMU with wins over Utah and Wyoming back-to-back. -back. Well, speaking of Utah, they were hosting the University of New Mexico, the once-beaten New Mexico Lobos. Third quarter, Chris Fuamatu Mafala barrels into the end zone, 6-3 to three Utes at that point. Graham Lee for New Mexico goes back to pass, and he looks back the other way to his favorite target, Pascal Volt. And New Mexico goes on top 10-6. Let's move to the fourth quarter. New Mexico forced to punt Kevin Dyson back at his own 25-yard line. He goes to the hash mark, cuts left, all of a sudden makes a nice move, has one guy to beat, punter, no shot. Dyson goes 75 yards for the touchdown on the punt return. Utah had 12 to 10, they would add a field goal, and Utah on a mild upset over New Mexico, 15 to 10. So the Lobos as well lose their second in a row. San Diego State won their second in a row, beating Hawaii on the island. The Rainbows with just six points in their last two games. Tom, that is not good. TCU on the road at BYU. No contest. 31 to 10, the Cougars over the Horn Frogs. In Colorado, blizzard weekend, so not played on Saturday, but on Sunday after a 24-hour postponement, Colorado State drops the Golden Hurricane 44-8. Cada agenda del salsero Tito Nieves encontró un tiempecito para irse a alquilar un traje para Halloween. En su recorrido por una de las tiendas más famosas de Nueva York, le acompañó Odalis Molina, quien también quería disfrazarse para la noche de brujas. Veamos en qué terminó esta búsqueda por el disfraz perfecto. Tito Nieves por haber escogido un traje que le vino como anillo al dedo. Uh, menos mal que ya no es funniest. And of course, the best children's pumpkin. They look like they were having a good time and that's most important. The hog time and won't let him go do it. That kick is good from 38 yards.